So this is a whole way, new way to do a habitat tour. Um, we're having to do it virtual. And we're gonna start out with our beverage tasting this evening. Um, we're out here at the beverage barn and holiday farms in Imperial. And Donna's gonna have some things for us to taste um, and sample here after bit. But I kind of wanted to go over, um, it is National Pollinator Week, and I just wanted to go over some of the facts about why we're doing a tasting and why we're talking about pollination at the same time. Um, so pollination occurs when pollen grains are moved between two flowers of the same species or within a single flower by wind or animals that are pollinators. Successful pollination, which may require visits by multiple pollinators to a single flower, results in healthy fruits and fertile seeds, allowing plants to reproduce. Without pollinators, we simply wouldn't have many crops. So basically, pollinators affect one out of every three bites of our food every day that we eat. So when we talk to the kids um, and the youth when we do our activities, it's really important that pollinators are really important to our food supply and the ingredients that we make our suppers and our breakfasts and our dinners out of every day. But then it also goes to some of the flavorings and some of the different fruits and vegetables that we can use in some of our beverages that we drink. And most of all, just the food that we eat every day. So 75% of all flowering plants rely on animal pollination and over 200,000 species of animals act as pollinators. Of those, about 1,000 are hummingbirds, bats, and small mammals. And the rest are insects such as beetles, bees, ants, wasps, butterflies, and moss. So that's some of the things we want to talk about. Pollinators, that's why it's important to Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever to be able to promote um, the planting of pollinating plants in our wildlife habitat projects. And we're also starting to work more with folks that are wanting to do backyard gardens or even community gardens that maybe a nursing home or a daycare or a hospital, they want to play, plan a place where they can have these plants that are blooming all the time. And the other thing we want to talk about is we want to have things blooming from April until October. So we do have three different bloom periods. And when we're doing habitat work and we're trying to do habitat projects, we try to incorporate at least three um, species out of each bloom period um, for our pollinating plants. So that's another thing that we like to just talk about. And that's why it's important to Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever, because we want to promote pollinators and people planting more pollinating plants because we just don't have that many on the landscape. A lot of the times when we're doing that, a habitat project, we're going to find out what's missing on the landscape. And what's missing on the landscape is usually those pollinating plants. We have lots and lots of grass, we have lots and lots of crops, but we're usually missing those flowering plants um, on our landscape. So can everybody see us back here? Hair's flying and everything. Awesome. So, Miss Donna, are you ready? <laughs> oh, we, we've got strong back. We got strong backs that can hold stuff for us. And I have to hold that. <laughs> so it's a little okay. windy. Yes. Um, yes. which is cooling us off, which is great. But Miss Donna Vlasheen, um, she's one of the owners of the Beverage Barn, and she's been helping us do this um, habitat tour by hosting some beverage tastings for us here. And we do have several people that are out here helping us this evening. And, and we're gonna let Miss Donna tell us what she's gonna have for us to sample out here. So take it away. Well, come up with a list of things for pollinators in drinks. And I thought, oh gosh, it's gonna be tough. That's gonna be a tough one, uh, but it's not at all. There's thousands of drinks. If you just look anything fruited, um beers whiskeys honey um what else do we have tonight vodka some vodkas um you know there's just so many so uh but tonight we're only going to taste a few we can get a little bit carried away from time to time like last year i think we brought 20 or something that was way too many so we're going to start out tonight with a, a black eyed susan drink and um, did you post this for them? Okay, so this Black Eyed Susan cocktail has orange juice, pineapple juice, vodka, Maker's Mark, orange uh, liqueur of some sort, um, and then the maraschino cherry, the lime, and then the ice. I don't know if 
how this, if you can see it or not, if you want, a little closer. Okay. If you want to see the recipe, we didn't put the cherries in it. Um, you could use grenadine if you wanted to. Um, and the Maker's Mark is the one that's in here that's actually the whiskey. So um, that's going to give it a unique taste. So I've got my helper. Can I yep, leave? Yep. <laughs> Okay, so Miss Donna is passing out the Maker's Mark and the Black Eyed Susan. So a little bit about the Black Eyed Susan is the Kentucky Derby, the horses run for the roses. So when the horse wins at the end, they put a blanket of roses over the horse, that's the victor. And evidently, um, the Black Eyed Susan is what they do at the Belmont Stakes, which is hosted in Maryland. And so this is where this drink comes from, is it comes from Maryland, um, that it's the Black Eyed Susan is the flowers that they cover the horses with when they're the victor in the race. So I thought this was really cool um, that we actually had a drink that's named after a flower. And it's going to be one of the flowers that's going to be highlighted in our um, plant ID tour here in a little bit that we're also doing virtually. Um, so some other pollinator facts for you. I have my handy dandy sheet here. Um, why are pollinators important to us? Worldwide, approximately a thousand plants grown for food, beverages, fibers, spices, and medicines need to be pollinated by animals in order to produce the goods on which we depend. So foods and beverages produced with the help of pollinators include blueberries, chocolate, coffee, melons, peaches, pumpkins, vanilla, and almonds. Plants that depend on a single pollinator species and likewise pollinators that depend on a single type of plant for food are interdependent. If one disappears, so will the other. So it's just another reason that we really like to highlight pollinators during National Pollinator Week. And I think Donna might have Oh, she's still getting stuff ready. So she has several things that we're going to sample this evening. Um, and it's always kind of fun to come out here and see what things that have to be pollinated um, that we need to put in there. So what can everyone do for pollinators? You can watch for pollinators, get connected with nature, take a walk, experience the landscape and look for pollinators midday in sunny planted areas. So this has been a really big challenge for us. I've been having to do a bunch of video to get um, ready for our, to do this virtual wildflower walk that we're kind of doing today. And, but I've had to, been able to go out in a couple of evenings when the light's not so harsh and um, get to enjoy being outside and finding what pollinators that we can find on the plants that are blooming. So I think Donna does have another one that's ready for us. This is the mead. So mead is basically, can you guys see this? Can you see it, Trevor, on the screen? Okay. Yeah, I can see it just fine. So this is a Camelot um, mead. So mead is um, wine that's made out of honey instead of mead that, um, wine that's made out of grapes. So this was a nice light one. I've never had this one before. Main reason I bought it is because I really liked the label, honestly. Because of the label. Most Donna says most people buy the bottles because they like the labels. <laughs> Hello, Miss Donna Whiting. Hi there. <laughs> Just to let you know, you're um, you are on, so your mute is not on. That's okay. Okay, I can turn it on mute. Yep, perfect. I can figure out how to get back there. <laughs> I don't know that Donna, Donna doesn't have this one um, in the store. Um, I happen to, is it Camelot? It's from Indiana. So this was actually a bottle of mead that I'd bought back in February. Oh, that I, Oliver, though. I have Oliver Winery. You have Oliver, Oliver Winery is what Donna said this one is. Mm -hmm. So um, if you decide to go find some mead, this is the brand that you can go find. 
Is it pretty sweet? Okay. Oh, so Sarah says it's like liquid honey is what it tastes like. Tonda's making a funny face. <laughs> a bitter on the end. So um, we have a mixed group out here that some of them think it's pretty sweet. Some of us think that it's not so well, but um, I know one of my friends over here, she'd much rather have the uh, a little bit more dry wines. So the sweet wines um, aren't as appealing, which is okay. Oh, at Carolyn, so, okay. So this is the next one and Carolyn Lee and their watch party, you should have a bottle of this at your house. You wanna tell us a little bit about it? Um, it is just a raspberry Belgian beer. She has to have, so you have to have a pop top and a corkscrew yeah. to open this bottle, Carolyn. I hope you found that out. Yeah. Special. Okay. Uh, that is raspberry, um, raspberry flavor, but it's natural raspberry in here. So, and it's a Lindemann. Uh, it's a really good morning beer. Uh, a lot, a lot of, um, uh, runners drink it after they do a marathon. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> The go to the race. <laughs> we could hear what she talked, what she said. Can you hear what she said? No. No. Okay. So she was saying that um, this raspberry beer is a beer that the marathon runners will drink after they've finished a race for some reason. So um, it's a really good raspberry beer. Um, and she said if you like, if you're allergic to yeast, you don't want to drink this one because it does have yeast in it. And she says she thinks it's got some salt in it that helps to replace those electrolytes. So let me show you. Yeah, the, so our tasters here are saying that it kind of has a little bit of hint of tomato behind it. Um, so this is definitely one for you guys to check out. And I'm so sorry for the background noise. Um, it's really busy right on the highway tonight. So this is one that you could check out maybe from your local liquor store and see if you're interested in tasting that one. Oh, and you did get some agave for us. Okay, they want to see you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is the Smirnoff Green Apple. Uh, we just did this one as a fun one for um, green apple, apple trees, need to be have pollinators to grow uh it's a fun apple one that uh it's sweet but it's like um a wine cooler it's what it's like so i'm gonna serve this right over nice nice so let me know if you have any questions as we go along um, you can put it in the chat box if you want. This has really been a fun event for us to host here. Um, last year we did Taste and Take Thursday. So we actually had wild game appetizers. So one of our NRCS soil conservationists, he does a lot of um, wild game cooking. So he actually made some barbecued venison meatballs last year. And then he also made some French dip goose sliders that went over really well. And then Jenny, um, our biologist from Lincoln, she actually made deer loin jalapeno poppers on the grill. So that went over really well. And we actually had 40 people at our habitat tour last year. And this beverage tasting has been a big part of, a really fun part of our tour. When I decided to start, doing habitat tours, I decided that I wanted to start doing a tour that I wanted to attend. So we decided to start doing make and take for the adults, we do it for the kids all the time. They get to take stuff home all the time and the adults don't always get to do that. So at the end of this, we'll end up doing our make and take card project at the end of it. So once we get done with the tasting, we'll roll into plant ID. Um, 
I have a PowerPoint put together and then we also have some video clips. So we actually have some video clips of us out being in the field last night and last week and we can kind of show you some of the things that have been blooming out here. Do you have another one, Donna, for us? Okay, this is the Jack Daniels honey. Um, oh, you can really smell the honey when you open that one up. It smells good. But the Jack, so there's several of them. This is the Jack Daniels version. I think Jim Beam, are they doing one? No? Crown. So there's a lot of the whiskeys that are doing um, honey with um, their whiskey. Um, one of nice favorite whiskey these days is the Peach Crown Royal, which is really, really hard to find. Um, but it's been a favorite of mine for a while. Yes, you'd be my friend forever if you could find that. Yeah, it's seasonal. Hey, Leslie Fowler. I'm so glad you could get on and join us. So we're in between um, tasting. Miss Sarah over here said the honey really hits when you, before she even got it drank, she hit it in her nose. Um, so the Jack Daniels honey is pretty good. Uh, true agave that you use in a margarita, if you're going to make your own. Um, the agave plant is, reminds you of an aloe vera plant, much bigger. And um, it is really sticky, really, really sticky. And you'll see this. Now, this has no alcohol in it. So um, it's interesting. It's an interesting taste. It is a sweetener for margaritas if you're making your own. And um, and that's what they make tequila to make the margaritas or just straight tequila. Yeah. <laughs> so Miss Donna has a um, bottle of agave syrup. And if you couldn't hear it, um, it is used as a sweetener. Um, the agave is also what they make tequila out of. So does anybody know if um, what animal is the one that does pollinate the agave plants? Does anybody have any idea? If you've been to my habitat tour before, you should know. Donna knows. What? I missed the question. What, um, what critter um, pollinates the agave plants? You gave it for a you gave it for a trivia. It's a bat. So it's a bat that um, pollinates the agave plant. So we have to have pollinators. I joked a couple of years ago at um, the beginning of one of my tours that if you like margaritas, if you like coffee, if you like chocolate, you better appreciate the pollinators because if we didn't have the insect pollinators, we wouldn't have any of those ingredients. So you know, I don't know. It could. That's about it. Yep. I don't even know. Maybe some places in California, but it would take the um, it would the length of grow time would be crazy here. The next one's easy. It's a, just a tea. It's just a tea. Okay. Uh huh. Here. I'll put this in there. Yep. So, whoops, we got the lid off. So, this is a pure leaf tea. I don't want to like spill it all over my computer. That would be bad. Um, this is a mango hibiscus one, and it's a brewed herbal tea. And then, are we going to do Savannah tonight? Sample of Savannah. Oh, the no, we okay. took that. We did Celsius instead. Okay. It's a green tea. Okay. So, there's also different brands. There's pure leaf has some, but there's Tavana, and those actually come like in a glass bottle. And they have a green tea and a black tea and an herbal tea. And then pineapple. this is, um, yeah, pineapple, mango. And so they have several different kinds. So if you're in, if you like teas, just keep going and looking. And, and you'll see that a mango, you know, the mango hibiscus, we need to have that to be pollinated to have that in um, as a flavoring for your tea. So, it's just delicious. so we do have some non-alcoholic stuff that we've done. Donna has done, um, the first year, I think she did a, a non-alcoholic mojito. 
Um, so make sure that you do have a glass of something while you're, okay, so I see Robin's got wine and somebody else has got something in a skinny can. Um, so there's so many of the white claws and the seltzers um, that are really becoming popular too. So just look at those and you're gonna see some kind of um, fruit probably in there that needs to be pollinated um, to have that flavoring in that drink. So it really makes you think about what you're drinking and what you like to drink even as a tea. Um, that there needs to be pollinators that have to pollinate those plants so we can have those different flavors. <laughs> so I'm reading on the screen, we are getting some, a few questions and some remarks to come in. Yes, Mary, go, you need to go grab a drink and join us. <laughs> that would be great. Um, but we do, we have about, there's probably eight or 10 of us out here this evening and, um, it's been a really, it's been a really fun event to host and to actually get people to come together. Last year when we did this, it was like a great big social hour. I mean, we just had a really good time. Um, and when we were out last year, we were out in the field and there were quail singing that night. The pheasants were crowing that night when we were out. It was just a beautiful evening to be outside. Um, we saw deer when we were headed to the tour last year. And she even made it up within probably 40 or 50 feet of the building um, out there that evening. And there was all sorts of people out there, you know, wandering around and she's probably going, what are all these people doing? Um, but I really have enjoyed hosting this Habitat tour. It's, it has taken off really well. But like I said, I just wanted to be able to do a tour that I wanted to attend. And um, so that's what we're doing. So I think Miss Donna has one more, several more, okay. Okay, so Carolyn's watch party, wherever you are, you guys have a bottle of this wine. So this is Lawrence Elk. It's a black currant wine. It's made by the Prairie Berry Winery in South Dakota. So this is another one that we'll be tasting. So does anybody have a favorite um, wine or beverage they like to have? You could show us on the screen. <laughs> you want me to unmute you? No? <laughs> It'd be okay. It's a dark wine. It's a, is it a dry wine? Oh, I can smell it. Can I smell it? Oh yes, definitely current. Yeah. Definitely. This one is a honey one. Okay. Yes. And this is yours. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Um, you know, this is um, South Dakota. South, South Dakota too. Same thing. Same as that. Okay. Near the same place. Same same place. Okay. So it's really close to the same. So the um, black current that everybody just had, it is a dry wine. Um, my friend that likes the dry wine, she liked that one. That was a thumbs up from her over there in the corner that she liked that wine because it's a little bit more dry, um, not so sweet. And then the next one, I picked this one up in South Dakota over the weekend. It's called Buck Naked. And um, the other one that they had on the shelf that I was really tempted to buy was called Menopause Merlot. Um, but what drew me to this one is because it's 75% honey wine and 25% black currant wine. And I knew Donna said she was having a hard time finding the meat. So I went ahead and bought this one. But so yeah, if you're in South Dakota sometime, look for the menopause um, Merlot because I believe it had like chocolate. We gotta find it. It had like chocolate on it. Um, Donna, can you read this? for me. Chocolate cloves and strawberry was this menopause Merlot that I saw that um, it just made me absolutely crack up in this candy store. So I found the buck naked one instead and I got that one and, and brought it for us to, to try and sample. My Okay, 
More pollinator facts. What about bees that sting and what about allergies? Um, most species of bees don't sting. Although all female bees are physically capable of stinging, most bee species native to the US are solitary bees, that is not living in colonies and don't sting unless they're physically threatened or injured. Only honeybees are defensive and may chase someone who disturbs their hive. So what is the whole thing in the fish line? Whoa, that's not a good one. I'm seeing lots of sour faces. It's not bad. It's not the best. It's a, um, Aaron says it would be a good cooking wine. Um, so maybe you could cook with it and maybe you could marinate some chicken or something like that with it. So Aaron, he's one of our um, guests that is here helping sample this evening and he's an avid hunter and he said he likes to marinate um, his deer steaks in wine sometimes before he cooks them. Robin says her go-to drink is bee's knees. So is it a wine? And Mary said she got married at the Prairie Berry Winery in South Dakota. That is so cool to know, Mary. That's exciting. Thank you for sharing it's that. A, it's, not a, it's not a wine, it's a liquor drink. I'll have it's I'm a liquor drink. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she said, um, Robin says the bee's knees is a liquor drink. Um, she's gonna see if she can maybe find a recipe for that. Um, do you have anything else? We have Celsius, which is the next drink that we have. And this is another non-alcoholic drink. This is a green tea, non-carbonated raspberry. Um, Donna said they're very good. She said her son likes to drink these. And they're non-carbonated, so they're not fizzy. How many calories are in a can? Zero sugar, 10 calories in that can. It just wants to be. So she said these come in several different flavors. There's a grape, a peach mango. Which one do you have tonight? She has the raspberry one tonight. Um, here is the agave syrup. This was the syrup that she has here in the store. And I knew when her and I were talking about this last week, this was about the only one that she's been able to get. She's kind of been hoarding it for a while. So thank you for sharing. Um, but you can use this for a sweetener. I know sometimes they'll use this instead of honey or sugar um, that you can use this agave syrup. It is a really unique taste. So if you ever get a chance to taste some agave, it is a really neat taste. This one, and her store is running 550 a bottle. So, but some of the things out of Mexico because of the COVID stuff that's going on, they have halted that they can't bring a lot of stuff from um, across the border sometimes. So, um, there's some things that we can't get as easily now. I know she said some of the margarita mixes she happened to have on hand. Um, Lacey said, Lacey, our biologist from Ainsworth, she said she found an awesome wine from the local Nyberry Valley Vineyards in the Nebraska Sandhills, just west of Valentine. She said it's called um, Blackberry Blizzard, and she loves it. Um, she says it's a really good sweet wine. And then Robin said the bee's knees is gin, lemon juice, and honey. Make up the bee's knees cocktail. Um, do bees pollinate hemp? I don't know. Um, Leslie Fowler, are you still on? Do you know? Do um, do bees pollinate hemp or Clusterman might know? Um, Leslie said she doesn't know that off the top of her head. So we'll keep you updated. Maybe we'll find, we'll get an answer for you. Let's see your name. That's awesome. Um, so that's some of the things that we got to taste. So we did get to do the agave. Did everybody like the agave? Yeah, that one was a good one. Um, the Lindemans, the raspberry beer. Um, 
There was several of them that did not like this one. This one didn't go over well with our tasting crowd. Can you see that, Robin? Okay, perfect. Um, and then the pure leaf tea, which is sometimes, you know, you can find that probably in any convenience store. Um, this is the mango hibiscus. Did you have the Smirnoff one, Bill? My hands are all sticky now from that syrup. Oh, she's bringing me more bottles so I can show the bottles again. All of them. I'll just show them again. So here was the Smirnoff ice. This was the green apple. I think this is a maybe a fairly new flavor. Oh, we have a fly in there. And then this is the Camelot mead. This was the honey wine. Um, and we and she said this was from the Oliver Winery and this was out of Indiana. Um, I picked this one up in Kearney and I've had this one probably since February, I think. I think that's when I got it. It was in February. So I've been hanging on that one for a while. And then the Lawrence Elk, which is a bright raspberry um, from the Prairie, Prairie Berry vin, vin, uh, Vineyard winery. That's the, one of the other ones that we tasted this evening. Um, and then the Jack Daniels honey whiskey. And then the buck naked and that one evidently didn't go over very well. Oh, good for cooking. Everybody says it's good for cooking. So cute name. Wine didn't taste very good. The meat didn't taste very good. So do we have a favorite? Did anybody have a favorite? Absolute favorite? Oh, and then here's the Celsius, which is the other non-alcoholic drink we had this evening. Which one did you like? Okay, so we had one between the raspberry beer and the red wine. Um, Sarah said she really liked the raspberry beer. Sherry? Rad, the raspberry beer, Tonda. Oh, the, the Black Eyed Susan. So she liked the Black Eyed Susan. Trevor? Raspberry beer. Um, another Black Eyed Susan. Oh, the Green Apple Smirnoff. The Black Eyed Susan and then the Smirnoff. Um, they liked that. And what about you, sir? Same two. So the Black Eyed Susan and then the Green Apple Ice. Is this one fairly new? No, this one's been out for a while. Okay, nice, nice, nice. So, absolutely, that's what we got it for. There's some salami in the bowl too. So we even have snacks. We have some cheese and some crackers and some salami. Um, Miss Lacey found the answer. She said the hemp is wind pollinated. Hemp produces no nectar, but a lot of pollen. So bees will visit to collect the pollen. Thank you, Lacey. I appreciate you looking that up for us. West side, what do you mean you don't know, Clusterman? What the heck? <laughs> yeah, I call on Clusterman out, I can do that. Um, he can never get down here for my tour, but that's okay. So, does anybody else have any questions? Um, one of my favorite drinks, my go-to drink since I went to Missouri a couple of years ago is I've been really enjoying the Moscow Mules and then I found out that I really liked the peach crown with the ginger beer and a little bit of lime. That is like one of my favorite drinks right now. I really like that. That's one of the favorites. Um, I've always been a tequila fan. I like margaritas. I'm like any other girl that we like chocolate. So there are um, midges, which are miniature flies that are responsible for um, pollinating most of the cocoa plants that we get our chocolate from. So yet again, it's another type of an insect that we need to rely on for chocolate. <laughs> Lacey, um, Clusterman said you're beating him to the punch. 